everybody to this uh, wonderful celebration of the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the JRE's professorship uh, here at uh, MIT. I'm, I'm Joe Sussman, uh, and it's been my singular honor to have held that chair since it was founded uh, 20 years ago in, in 19, 1991. Uh, and I will be the uh, master of ceremonies uh, for this uh, for this celebration. And just to show you what you are facing, uh, uh, I'll take a few introductory remarks. Uh, then uh, Mr. Uh, Masaki Ogata, vice chairman of JR East, will speak. Uh, followed by Professor Claude Canizares, uh vice president of research and associate provost at MIT. And last but not by any means least, uh, we will have a celebration after the, uh, after the speeches uh, right next door uh, with some uh, very nice mid-afternoon snacks of both uh, Japanese and American style food. So if you like sushi, stay around for, stay around for the whole thing and we'll have a, have a celebration. So, the, uh, the story starts uh, of, this, uh, of this relationship between MIT and, uh, and, and J.R. East uh, with a visit to the MIT campus in 1990 of uh, Mr. Yamashita, who was at that time the chairman of J.R. East. And it was his vision of having J.R. East reach out internationally to the research community that led to the formation and the establishment of, uh, of, this, uh, of this chair. So Mr. Yamashita visited the institute along with others uh, and he gave a speech to the School of Engineering about what his vision was for the relationship between MIT and J.R. East uh, and talked about a long-term relationship, recognizing that these things don't happen overnight. One needs to work to build a relationship of trust and productivity between institutions that are not only uh, in different countries, but are in radically different businesses. The uh, research and education institution and a, uh, and a major transportation company. So he talked about the, uh, the idea of building a systems-based enterprise that would be of value, uh, one that would focus on the needs of customers for, for the railroad, and one that would focus importantly on, uh, on safety, uh, which is viewed as a prime characteristic of, uh, of railroads, and J.R. East is in the forefront from a safety perspective as, as well as others. So, that speech was, in fact, is still discussed from time to time here at MIT 20 years after the fact because it was so uh, insightful and deep that uh, the colleagues at, at the Institute were uh, very much taken with that, with that visionary point of view. Now, the next uh, chart, the next uh, PowerPoint uh, is Tokyo Station in, uh, in, uh, in Tokyo, of course. And I put it up there to symbolize my first time where I was able to spend some individualized time together with, with Chairman Yamashita. Because uh, in 1991, there was this event we called the Technoplaza, JRE's called the Technoplaza, which was a demonstration of a variety of their kinds of technologies. So uh, I was invited to participate in the Techno Plaza, and it also became the site at which the chair was introduced to the to the Japanese public. And I remember being very taken by the tour of the of the floor of the exhibition that I took with Mr. Yamashita, uh, and watched how he talked to all the young engineers about the work they were doing, and it was clear that those engineers were extremely impressed by what had, uh, by the attention that was being given to them by the, by the chairman, a very charismatic man. And uh, it, it 
gave me a strong sense that we would have a good relationship, a good partnership with this uh, organization. So, as I said, building these relationships takes time. We've been at it 20 years and we, we're continuing to build it. J.R. East has sent many, many students to uh, the Institute to study. Uh, they have sponsored research of, of a variety of sorts over the, uh, over the years. Uh, we have endeavored to provide a strong intellectual home for the J.R. East people who traveled here uh, to, uh, to study and to, and to perform research. And we also work to provide a comfortable environment, an environment in which people far from home could feel, uh, could feel welcome. And indeed, this, this became kind of a family affair. Uh, my wife of 48 years, Henry Ann Sussman, is in the, in the audience, and she, on many occasions, opened our home to the visitors from, uh, from J.R. East and their spouses. Uh, and in fact, she became sort of a figure in and of herself to, uh, to, the, uh, to the wives of the people who were sent here, the, the gentlemen who were sent here in the early days. Uh, and it became uh, kind of a ritual that when I would travel to Japan, when the word got out that Henry Ann Sussman was coming to Tokyo, uh, comforting her husband, this bevy of wives would descend upon her, whisk her away, and I wouldn't see her for three or four days, but she seemed to be having, having a good time. But it, it suggests more seriously that people are a very important part of this, of this overall process. Building a relationship between organizations really means building a relationship between, uh, between individual people. And you'll, in the package that you were given when you registered, you'll see this lovely notebook uh, booklet that was prepared by J.R. East that traces out the history of the relationship with some vignettes from some 10 or so of the, of the many people who have traveled here so you can get some sense of how we have worked to, uh, to build, this, uh, build this connection between these, uh, between these two great institutions, J.R. East and MIT. So I'd like to thank J.R. East, uh, Mr. Ogata, Mr. Arai, and others, uh, others who have accompanied him uh, for their commitment to building the relationship and to uh, establishing the close bonds with the institute that you have. I want to thank my many colleagues who've worked with me over the years uh, here at MIT to build that relationship by supervising students. Uh, and by participating uh, in research. I see Daniele Veneziano in the audience as one who worked with many JRE students in the areas of safety and earthquakes uh, over the years. So it's been an institute-wide kind of initiative, not simply one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one type relationships between, uh, say, Mr. Ogata and me, but rather extending to a large number of, of people who, uh, who, we, uh, who we network network with. So that gives you some introductory sense of, of, of why we're here today, 20 years after the fact, to, to celebrate this, uh, the, uh, the establishment of the chair. And just to conclude, let me show you two other photographs. Uh, one is uh, uh, the, the, the gentleman who uh, I'm talking with, I'm on the far right of course, uh, is Mr. Matsuda, who at that time was the president of uh, of J.R. East and uh, Mr. Aramori, who in those days ran the uh, research uh, activities uh, at J.R. East. And I always had an opportunity when I traveled to meet uh, very senior people who also worked to make me understand the importance of a long-term relationship. And then, more currently, and as a segue to our next speaker, this is a photograph taken in the Dean of Engineering's conference room just about a year ago, almost to the day, I think it was October 15th of, of 2010, where we had a uh, research session and talked about the, the, the celebration. So you see, uh, you see me, I see Sanjay, Sanjay Sama down to, uh, to my left, who's also here with us today, uh, and Mr. Odata. Uh, and I can't quite from this angle see who everyone else is, but you can see that we're deeply engaged in substantive discussions of, uh, of important 
issues, both from an MIT and then from a JRE's point of view. So we have, of course, Mr. Ogata here with us, the, uh, the vice chairman of, uh, of JRE's and a, uh, a good friend personally and a good friend of the Institute. And we very much look forward to hearing what he has to say to us. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Sasma, of course, and Dr. Uh, uh, Onatowski for the MIT uh, liaison program. And also, we have welcomed uh, already our uh, Consul General uh, of Japan in Boston. Thank you very much to attending, for attending. And also, and all the uh, other distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as kindly in introduced, my name is Ogata, uh, Vice Chairman of GREs. Uh, it is really a great honor and pleasure uh, to be here at the MIT and share a great time to celebrate the, uh, the tw 20th anniversary uh, between uh, MIT and EJREs. I'd like to explain, uh, extend special greetings to all of you uh, on behalf of all the members of EJREs. Now I move to uh, just uh, my presentation, just my speech. So of course, Today is a great day for a 20th anniversary of GRE and MIT. And this picture, special picture, uh, shows you uh, the I mean, uh, inauguration of our very special relationship, just of course 20 years ago. And uh, Sumida san the first president of our company, uh, was still just very uh, active. And uh, he, he extends special regard to you, all of you. And for 20 years out of 24 uh, means uh, we are, I'm sorry, we are deeply grateful for the last 20 years of, of partnership. Uh, JRE's commenced collaboration with MIT in 20 years. Uh, only four years after uh, our uh, privatization and the division of the Japanese National Railways into seven railway company, JRE's has changed dramatically over the last two decades. And we have great respect, respect for MIT and its continued global environment and the contribution in all fields throughout the world. Uh, actually, as you have already known, from March 11th uh, this year, uh, we, have, we have a very great aspect and tsunami. And we are deeply grateful for you for a heartful message, many messages of encouragement. Due to uh, the aspect of March 11th, we postponed uh, the ceremony that has been scheduled for April the 7th today. Uh, thank you for your understanding and co cooperation in this matter. The challenge. I'd like to briefly explain about the, our challenge against the, counter, uh, against the earthquake and the tsunami. Of course, you have already known the date, I'm sorry, date <coughs> and strength, but uh, this time, Strength of ma ma earthquake, magnitude 9.0 uh, on the Richter scale. This is the largest in the recorded history in Japan. And you can see the number of deaths and missing. And we cover east parts of Japan, and epicenter <coughs> is here, Tokyo is here. This vertical axis corresponding to a frequency of aftershocks per day. And this Vertical axis corresponding to a cumulative number. So this is March 11th, and after that day, uh, we have more than 550 aftershocks, uh, which surpass magn uh, the magnitude 5.0 in this number. And I'd like to explain uh, briefly our counter measurements. First three rainforest pillars. Uh, as for the violence, as you can see right now. A seismic reinforcement to prevent shear failure, 
And uh, aside from cases of bending, uh, there was no critical damage to major structures by this aspect because we have already uh, adapted uh, a, a seismic reinforcement. And also, uh, this I mean, this slide shows you uh, very well the basic idea of our earthquake early detection system. Uh, as you have already known, earthquake is composed of a two, uh, one be, si, si, tim, very simple statement, primary wave and secondary wave. And this is the epicenter. And we have already installed the coast line seismometer uh, derived from the past aspect. Uh, very, uh, very good lesson derived from the past aspect. And now, primary wave comes first, of course. And our coast line seismometer catches the primary wave. And before the secondary wave came, uh, this uh, signal just was sub is submitted from the coast line seismometer to the power station. And as soon as our power station shut down, Imagine simply it can uh, be applied. So maybe uh, it's better for, to reveal it again. Primary, primary wave comes first, and coast line inside to catch it, and signal, and the emergency breaks. Such a system. So two trains running at approximately uh, 170 miles per hour uh, through the Sendai area were exposed to strong shaking uh, from the earthquake. That time. To power supply to these trains was cut 9 to 12 seconds before the first vibration arrived, and the emergency brakes were already applied, like this. And the largest vibration came to these trains approximately 70 seconds after the emergency brakes were applied. By then, it is supposed that the train had reached a speed of about 63 miles per hour, so they did some speed. <coughs> So, as for the Shinkansen high speed rail, we have 27 Shinkansen trains uh, in operation at that time. Uh, but uh, due to, uh, according to the, uh, our uh, seismic reinforcement and early earthquake detection system, as you have already seen, no derailment at all of Shinkansen train in service. And also, as for conventional lines, we have 617 17 conventional trains in operation at that time. And our station staff and the train crews of endanger trains and the station successfully led our passengers to imagination evacuation places uh, designated in advance by local governments and uh, before tsunami hits. So our consequences of the earthquake and tsunami, uh, no fatalities at all and no injuries at all for passengers. So. I would like to, we would like to extend special gratitude to the United States because, of course, Operation Tomodachi Saksen, uh, Operation Saksen, uh, in Japan it's Saksen, Tomodachi Saksen, Operation Tomodachi, just provide us uh, 20, over uh, 20,000 soldiers participate, and also uh, Operation Soul Train, especially for station recovery. Uh, so we will never, ever forget what you have done for us. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. So summary for the devastating aspect, countermeasure against the devastating aspect and tsunami in Japan. Safety is the GRE's top management priority. We have implemented through thorough countermeasures for earthquake and tsunami and other natural disasters in our safety policy. Uh, though the magnitude 9.0 earthquake was the largest ever recorded in the Japanese history, the results show that our countermeasures proved effective. We will examine the result of this time, of course, and derive uh, further lessons from the earthquake and tsunami and continue to improve the safety of our railroad. And also, we share our experience with the world and contribute to the advance of railroad technology in the world. I move to the, uh, our 20th anniversary topics. This shows you the table of contents. First, read, Shinkansen Innovation. We seek, we seek innovation, always seeking innovation, and we will keep doing so with the MIP. Uh, this showed you uh, the picture from uh, October 1st, 1964, about a half a century ago, uh, when the Shinkansen was born. The Shinkansen in Japan uh, has been carrying 8.8 .8 million passengers 
so far, and a number of miles run, 1,500 million passengers a mile. And the average delay time, uh, six, six, six seconds uh, in, in uh, the year, including a natural disaster, and the total of fatal accidents in the history is there now. And Shinkansen, the integration of all available technology became the world's first high-speed rail. And uh, this shows you our contribution to revolutionary change in the world rail. The first revolutionary change must be the uh, birth of Shinkansen, half a century ago, a charge the face of transportation and opened the world to the HSL high-speed rail year. If there were not for Shinkansen today, uh, maybe no other high speed as well, neither. The second, the charge from JR, JNR, Japanese former Japanese National Railways, to the JR Group on uh, 24 years ago, began the worldwide wave of privatization, of course, and next to be seen. This shows you the basic idea of Hayabusa Falcon E5 series. This was debut master fifth. But we have the very huge aspect on March the 11th. So it's just run for less than one minute. But okay, on April 29th, after 49 days after the aspect, it's resumed operation. Hayabusa, Falcon. Now I would like to move to uh, second topic, brief overview on JRBs. As you have already known, but uh, I would like to make a brief explanation about our uh, overview. Uh, we cover east parts of Honshu main islands, and we have a network for over 7,500 kilometers. And we are carrying 70 million passengers a day, and if I just uh, refer to this figure to reporting visitors, maybe that's the first time they do not believe. But actually, we are carrying 70 million passengers a day. And we are operating more, more, more than 13,000 trains a day. And revenues, as you can see from this figure. I mean, and also, we do not receive any subsidies at, at all. We do not receive any local subsidy, any federal government subsidy at all. And we have a lot of business, but of course, among them, railway road business is very important. And we have three categories, high-speed rail, urban transportation, regional lines. And also, we just create active lifestyle business, non-transportation business, like our office, hotels, uh, retail, shopping in the station. And this is hotel and sports center and the resort. This shows you the third business. Uh, I have been engaged in the three car operation, of course, but uh, uh, this shows you the micro payments and tickets. And tickets include, of course, a reservation tickets for the high speed rail and also commuting pass and the normal fares. And the new, of course, we have to have uh, new ideas for the future. Some topics the significance of MIT and GL is partnership and the chronology. Just uh, Professor Sussman already mentioned, uh, our partnership is very significant. And MIT, uh, World Foremost Research Institute for Industrial Sciences, and Jerry is World Foremost Rail Farm with largest ridership. So collaboration of the two world leaders, these two are, uh, Jerry's business can reflect MIT technology in its custom services, as well as in social sense. And also we can contribute to the advancement and innovation of world technology. This showed you a very good memory, as Professor Satsuma has already mentioned. Uh, Yamano san Satsuma is here, Yamano san right here, and with very good pictures from first. The same picture as uh, Professor Satsuma showed to us. And also a joint research project and a reciprocal visit between each other and the students. Uh, from our company to, to MIT, of course. So, fourth topic, example of the result of our collaboration. Safety. Safety has always been and always be at JRE. We will continue to raise the level of our safety, of course, with MIT. 
<laughs> MIT is, is a world leader uh, in the study of risk assessment methodology and in advanced fields such as nuclear energy and space technology. Uh, MIT's strengths match JRE's needs. Example of actual collaborative activities between MIT and JRE's in the history, development of safety assessment, seismic risk, as risk assessment, study of train control systems. So I'd like to show three examples. First three, uh, safety assessments. So vertical axis corresponding to a frequency of occurrence and uh, horizontal axis correspond to maximum damage ranking. But anyway, as a result of MIT's academic risk management study, new idea in risk assessment were our safety research laboratory, as mentioned in our safety vision 2013. Next example shows you a seismic risk, risk assessment and as, uh, assessing, assessing, assessing effectiveness of various seismic countermeasures. Third example, study of train control system. So this is just an example. We have many uh, other examples uh, between MIT and JRBs. Fifth topic would be the future challenges. Uh, we are surrounded by many uh, changing management environment, of course. Shrinking domestic markets in Japan, uh, low birth rate and the aging society in Japan. And the advance of globalization, uh, development of information and the communication technology, uh, namely ICT. And also environmental issues like, uh, like including the CO2 emissions, etc. Uh, so today in the world, the instatement of public transportation in society is very emphasized, of course, in the United States, especially rail transit in particular. And also, I'd like to skip this, I mean, slide, but uh, as you have already known, uh, we have surrounded by the movement of a globalization, fusion of world economy into a single market, international exchange, tourism, <coughs> including centralization of politi political functions, global scale of social issues, and of, of course, increased global competition bringing about changes in the industrial structure and we a need for optimization of capital uh, of course stockholders corporations consumers and information and shifting business models so the JR is has been considered as a very domestic company but today jerry's group will take on the challenge this is a very original idea uh, of mine i think i strongly believe, believe that we are going to have a further globalization movement, and also uh, we are going to experience uh, development of ICT, of course. And further globalization and the development of ICT uh, just interact to, together, I think. The, the two factors are going to have a strong ties between, two, between them and accelerate each other, I think. Of course, according to, due to, according to Moore's law, and also uh, friction, frictionless capitalism by Bill Gates. I think a further interaction, acceleration has occurred, like a cycle. So necessity to adapt the changing environment. Uh, this is a very famous word by Charles Ward Darwin, but uh, through the internet, I checked. Uh, some professor said Charles Darwin never said that thing. This is such a thing. <laughs> but anyway, it is not the strength of the species that survives, nor the most intelligence that survives. It is the one that most adaptable to change, I think. Uh, even though Charles Darwin didn't say it in that words, but uh, uh, this is a very important concept. So the JR East group without innovation will be less than nothing. I strongly believe that. And in that case, uh, in, in the case of innovation in management, uh, mission innovation in management, uh, revolutionizing the corporate domain, and the angles, ICT, customer-oriented service, B2B, B2C. This is showed you some examples, uh, my strong belief. Uh, firstly, continuously promoting innovation in our power businesses. This is railroad or a non-transportation business. Uh, which can emerge with advanced technology and a new business, which you have in MIT, model, models born from society's needs to bring about new products. So, our innovation, continuous innovation, uh, can emerge with a new technology, like you have, and which will have the chance to succeed in the ready market. 
So we have already a very good example in Suica WiMAX overseas rate project. So it showed you some these three examples. Uh, I was engaged in the automation of passenger gates. So this is quite innovation in core business. And also we, uh, we have been thinking about the broadband wires replacing fixed network. It is also like, some example of innovation in my company and raising Shinkansen speed uh, up to uh, 200 miles per hour. This is also another example of innovation. Then this tech innovation, continuous innovation, sustainable innovation can meet with the ICT development in the society. So uh, Suica can be just produced with, with uh, innovation in my company and the new technology. And also WiMAX in GREs and E5 series, just you have seen on the moving picture. And that leads to the success on the map. So today, uh, about 60 million passengers hold the Suica in conjunction with the PASMO. PASMO is a, uh, the, the same car, the very, very same car of the, uh, the other private railway. So, in fact, I see tickets and electric money in Japan today. And also, new data communication infrastructure for intra-use and the customer use from these kind of innovation and the new technology. And also, right now, we are going to expand our Shinkansen uh, to overseas project. So ICT, I means information, but I think I strongly think that I means intelligence. And also, uh, C in general means uh, network communication, but I strongly believe that C means customer relationship. And also technology, just as Ms. Professor Sassman mentioned, uh, the past chairman, our past chairman, Yamashita, Mr. Yamashita, emphasized we are the service-oriented industry by the entire technology. We are not the railroad company. We are the company like this. So, JREs will develop its business not only domestically, but uh, also globally. We innovate in management through an international viewpoint using ICT. We will establish an international consulting company uh, the coming November 1st, and to enhance our capacity in proposing overseas projects. So we need change of management environment. Uh, we need to adapt uh, to the change of management environment and globalization, and also we seek for innovation in management. So ICT will be in indispensable. The strength of MIT matches our needs very much. So finally, I'd like to uh, explain our future study vision. I think to promote study uh, of innovation in customer communication, energy management, and system optimization is a very important for us. Uh, by continuing collaborative relationship with MIT to take a leading role in bringing innovative reform to the rail industry and to take a preconceived notion in order to eff effectively contribute to rail industry around the world. So first thing would be innovation customer communication. We need to develop ICT-based uh, applications to conduct effective communication with customers and raise our level of services. And personally responsible for quality of service in my company, uh, like uh, such a, like a CQO, Chief Quality Officer. And JREs uh, should provide many information to 70 million customers, and also we direct to receive many uh, opinions from the customers. So we direct to have many uh, information of their, of the, about concerning uh, with their needs, for two-way communications. In such a cases, we need the MIT technology. For example, for example, key technology would be sensor network technology, control technology, information processing technology, user interface design, and so on, which you have. And also adapting to the aging society, disadvantaged travelers, foreign travelers, varying environments, and security needs. So, revolutionizing station services through ICT. There is must become synonymous words with innovation. Team two, second, second team, will be a system optimization. Ten, 24 years ago, when we are privatized, we only have uh, three systems. But today, it is, has been already expanded to more than 200, 200 systems, about 250. And our group, our group has more than uh, 850 systems in, in my group, uh, group, group company. So uh, we just covering uh, seven, more than 75 miles kilometers 
and also we are carrying 70 million passengers, as I have already mentioned, and we are operating more than 13,000 trains a day. So to further optimize safety, stability, and the cost of the systems, we by all means want to make use of study disciplines, such as the system of systems engineering, along with findings of MIT research. And this shows you a basic idea. Uh, uh, vertical axis corresponds to a difficulty in marketing procurement. Uh, horizontal corresponds to contribution to level of competitivity. And our system includes financial affairs and also operating management, accounting, and so on. So train control here, uh, income management here, uh, accounting here, such a thing, such a things. And how is data held? What is the most effective method of data linkage? What is most cost effective? So we want to optimize systems company-wide without interrupting operations. So we are going to classify uh, more than 250 systems like this. Uh, for the carbon energy management, CO2 in, uh, carbon dioxide management, to contribute to the environment as a well, whole, stations and communities all need to manage energy efficiently. We need to make use of measurements, uh, devices such as smart meters, a central element to our energy system, and to optimize energy use and energy uh, conservation. There is, with its own hydraulic and summer power plant, we have two power plants. This is one single company which holds uh, two power plants uh, as a railway company. On one side, and railway hotels on the other side. So we have uh, supply side, and also uh, we have consuming size. So environment in multiple aspects of society is our strength point. We have two power plants, one summer, one hydraulic, and we have trains, of course, and we have many technology for regenerating the electricity uh, and also powering, and uh, hotels, stations, car rentals, and also renewable energies. So we need strong energy management like a smart leader. So in conclusion, two world leaders collaborating with each other uh, will bring about a synergistic effect that can be driving force in the world. A very happy past 20 years for MIT <laughs> and Maybe I'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so many times. Inspiring talk, and uh, I, can, I know you've had a very appreciative uh, audience. Back, uh, back uh, in uh, in March, when the disaster occurred in, in Japan and the uh, April 7 uh, event to be postponed, uh, you and I talked about the fact that when you were able to have the event, uh, it would be a symbol of the rebirth. Of J.R. East and of the uh, and of the uh, importance and symbolizing the importance that the rebirth of J.R. East has to the nation of Japan as an iconic and productive member of that society. So, uh, in some sense, we celebrate also today the fact uh, of the extraordinary recovery of your railroad, and the extraordinary recovery of your. Uh, of your nation. Uh, your focus on innovation is, is of vital importance. Without innovation, as you said, there's nothing. Uh, Nobel laureate uh, Professor Solo here at MIT uh, talked, uh, has, has demonstrated for many years the, the relationship between in innovation and economic growth, and your, your company is an example of that. So, thank you so much for, uh, for an excellent talk. Our final uh, our final speaker is uh, Professor Claude Canzaris, uh, who uh, serves as the Vice President of Research and Associate Provost here at MIT. Uh, he is uh, highly time constrained today with the MIT Corporation meeting, so uh, certainly we don't want J.R. East to make anybody late, that not late himself. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be bad to do it otherwise. So let me, with no further ado, turn the program over to Claude. Thank you.
thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Joe, for the kind introduction. Uh, Chairman uh, Ogata, Mr. Arai, uh, uh, Consul Arai, welcome, uh, and all the distinguished members of the JRE's delegation. It's my great pleasure on behalf of MIT to welcome you back once again to what I hope you see as your second home, uh, uh, away from home. Uh, you, uh, Chairman Ogata gave a really marvelous presentation, I will say, uh, that, that captures so much about our, both our, our past successes and our, our um, great accomplishments, but very much also forward-looking to decide where and, and chart a path to, uh, to the next 20 years. And that is very much in the tradition of MIT. And I was struck by uh, quite a number of things in your presentation. First of all, of course, as, as Professor Sussman has already mentioned, um, there were so many of us uh, who, who were really um, uh, appalled by the tragedy that struck Japan um, uh, just uh, some months ago. Uh, I think even, um, even before you, you told us what you told us today, uh, we, like the rest of the world, um, have been uh, unbelievably impressed uh, and look with great, such great admiration to Japan, to the resilience of the people, uh, to the nobility with which they have faced this tragedy and, and, uh, and recovered. Uh, and to the resilience of great institutions like J.R. East to make that happen. But I must say, the statistics that you showed, those two large zeros for fatalities and injuries uh, in, the, in the, JR, the huge J.R. East transportation network is really uh, admirable. And I would like my MIT colleagues to extend our, our appreciation to you. The, um, a, a, as your uh, presentation so, so admirably showed, uh, MIT and J.R. East share so many things in common. Most importantly, the fundamental values of innovation, of, of looking forward, and of serving uh, both uh, our uh, uh, mutual and also the world economies, but very much the people that, uh, uh, to, to whom these are so important. Um, our relationship with, with J.R. East is of great importance to us for uh, quite a few reasons. Uh, transportation is very much at the heart of so many of the key issues that face uh, humanity. Um, and uh, as you know, MIT now has a major transportation initiative. Uh, and in some sense, J.R. East was in the vanguard of that. And it's because of relationships like this one that we are, were able to to consolidate those into a major transportation uh, uh, initiative. Um, and Cindy Bartenhart, who's here, has helped uh, uh, really lead, lead that effort, as, as uh, Professor Sussman. Um, the, uh, uh, the importance of transportation uh, both to uh, uh, economic well-being and economic growth, something of great interest to both our countries uh, at the present time, indeed to the world, but moreover to, uh, to human well-being. Uh, because it, be, it is so much at the center of, um, of human activity uh, in urban settings, uh, between urban settings, in food distribution, and in uh, making a major contribution towards solving the energy problems and the climate problems that, that the entire world faces. So these are, these are issues that are absolutely at the core of what we must do. Uh, MIT uh, here in Cambridge, Mass, cannot address these issues alone. We can't even define all the problems alone. We really need partnerships uh, like the one with J.R. East, and it's almost a model for how that, how that can work. Um, our students and our faculty are, are uh, keenly interested in understanding the immediate difficulties and problems that industry is facing uh, and in helping to contribute uh, to their uh, solutions. Uh, so. Um, we, we are very much, we think, uh, uh, in a partnership like uh, with, with J.R. East, creating something that is much greater than the sum of our parts. Um, your uh, statements about the vision for the future, I think, resonate extremely well 
uh, at MIT with our vision for the future. Innovation, we are convinced, is absolutely the, the, the key element that's going to allow the world to overcome the great many challenges, both in energy and climate, uh, uh, in urban development, uh, and, um, uh, and in economy. And uh, so with, with those common values and those common um, shared uh, a vision for the future, we think the next 20 years uh, promise to be at least as fruitful, we hope, if not more fruitful than the last 20. So thank you very much. Congratulations to everyone who brought us to this 20-year uh, uh, celebration, uh, and we look forward to 20 more years of, of excellent cooperation.
And I always say, oh my God, they're going to take the Acela Express up to Boston and they're going to wonder what this nation is about if this is going to be all high speed rail. So thank you all for, uh, for your participation. We have a reception in the, uh, in the room immediately uh, to, uh, to our left, and we hope you will all join us, and thank you for being part of this great celebration. the MIT campus in 1990 of uh, Mr. Yamashita, who was at that time the chairman of JR East. And it was his vision of having JR East reach out internationally to the research community that led to the formation and the establishment of, uh, of, this, uh, of this chair. So Mr. Yamashita visited the institute along with others uh, and he gave a speech to the School of Engineering about what his vision was for the relationship between MIT and JR East uh, and talked about a long-term relationship, recognizing that these things don't happen overnight. One needs to work to build a relationship of trust and productivity between institutions that are not only uh, in different countries, but are in radically different businesses. The uh, research and education institution and a, uh, and a major transportation company. So he talked about the, uh, the idea of building a systems-based enterprise that would be of value, uh, one that would focus on the needs of customers for, for the railroad, and one that would focus importantly on, uh, on safety, uh, which is viewed as a prime characteristic of, uh, of railroads, and JR East is in the forefront from a safety perspective as, as well as others. So that speech was, in fact, is still discussed for a time. We've been at it 20 years, and we, we're continuing to build it. JR East has sent many, many students to uh, the Institute to study. Uh, they have sponsored research of, of a variety of sorts over the, uh, over the years. Uh, we have endeavored to provide a strong intellectual home for the JRE's people who traveled here uh, to, uh, to study and to, and to perform research. And we also work to provide a comfortable environment, an environment in which people far from home could feel uh, could feel welcome, and indeed this, this became kind of a family affair. Uh, my wife of 48 years, Henry Ann Sussman, is in the, in the audience, and she, on many occasions, opened our home to the visitors from, uh, from J.R. East and their spouses, uh, and in fact, she became sort of a figure in and of herself to, uh, to, the, uh, to the wives of the people who were sent here, the, the gentlemen who were sent here in the early days, uh, and it became uh, kind of a ritual that when I would travel to Japan, when the word got out that Henry Ann Sussman was coming to Tokyo, uh, comforting her husband, this bevy of wives would descend upon her, whisk her away, and I wouldn't see her for three or four days, but she seemed to be having, having a good time. But it, it suggests more seriously that people are a very important part of this, of this overall process. Building a relationship between organizations really means building a relationship between, uh, between individual people. And you'll, in the package that you were given when you registered, you'll see this lovely notebook uh, booklet that was prepared by J.R. East that traces out the history of the relationship with some vignettes from some 10 or so of the, of the many people who have traveled here, so you can get some sense of 
how we have worked to uh, to build this uh, build this connection between these uh, between these two great institutions, J.R. East and MIT. So I'd like to thank J.R. East, uh, Mr. Ogata, Mr. Arai, and others uh, others who have accompanied him uh, for their commitment to building the relationship and to. Uh, establishing the close bonds with the institute that you have. I want to thank my many colleagues who've worked with me over the years uh, here at MIT to build that relationship by supervising students uh, and by participating uh, in research. I see Daniele Veneziano in the audience as one who worked with many JRE students in the areas of safety and earthquakes uh, over the years. So, it's been an institute-wide kind of initiative, not simply one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one type relationships between, uh, say, Mr. Ogata and me, but rather extending to a large number of, of people who, uh, who, we, uh, who we network network with. So that gives you some introductory sense of, of, of why we're here today, 20 years after the fact, to, to celebrate this uh, the, uh, the establishment of the chair. And just to conclude, everybody to this uh, wonderful celebration of the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the JRE's professorship uh, here at uh, MIT. I'm, I'm Joe Sussman, uh, and it's been my singular honor to have held that chair since it was founded. Uh, 20 years ago in, in 19, 1991, uh, and I will be the uh, master of ceremonies uh, for this uh, for this celebration. And just to show you what you are facing, uh, uh, I'll make a few introductory remarks. Uh, then uh, Mr. Uh, Masaki Ogata, vice chairman of JR East, will speak. Uh, followed by Professor Claude Canizares, uh, Vice President of Research and Associate Provost at MIT. And last but not by any means least, uh, we will have a celebration after the, uh, after the speeches uh, right next door uh, with some uh, very nice mid-afternoon snacks of both uh, Japanese and American style food. So if you like sushi, stay around for stay around for the whole thing, and we'll have a have a celebration. So the uh, the story starts uh, of this uh, of this relationship between MIT and uh, and and JR East uh, with a visit time to time here at MIT 20 years after the fact because it was so uh, insightful and deep that uh, uh, the colleagues at, at the institute were uh, very much taken with that with that visionary point of view. Now, the next uh, chart, the next uh, PowerPoint, uh, is Tokyo Station in uh, in uh, in Tokyo, of course, and I put it up there to symbolize my first time where I was able to spend some individualized time together with, with Chairman Yamashita, because uh, in 1991, there was this event we called the Technoplaza, JRE's called the Technoplaza, which was a demonstration of a variety of their kinds of technologies. So uh, I was invited to participate in the Technoplaza, and it also became the site at which the chair was introduced to the, to the Japanese public. And I remember being very taken by the tour of the, of the floor of the exhibition that I took with Mr. Yamashita uh, and watched how he talked to all the young engineers about the work they were doing. And it was clear that those engineers were uh, extremely impressed by what had, uh, by the attention that was being given to them by the, by the chairman, a very charismatic man. And uh, it, it gave me a strong sense that we would have a good relationship, a good partnership with this uh, organization. So, as I said, building these relationships takes time.